All right, so I've spent the last couple of weeks uh, adding Vite support to SAS Pegasus, and I have learned a lot about both Vite and front end in the process. And after just a couple of weeks of using it, I am now sort of like fully on board the Vite train. I now believe that every Django project with sort of like a front end build system should be using Vite instead of Webpack. And I will talk a little bit about why and, and demo some of that today. So first off, just like, why is Vite better than Webpack? And I, I see kind of three main reasons. The first is it's just faster. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, but that's, that's basically the punchline. The second is uh, something called hot module replacement, which lets you reload your front end without reloading your browser, um, which is really cool. I'll show you what that is like as well. And then the third is um, something called code splitting, which uh, optimizes your front end. So yeah, let's dive into those reasons. And then I'll talk a little bit about how I've set up uh, Vite with Django and how you can do that in your own projects. OK, so the first thing to demo is just that Vite is faster. So I've got um, npm run build hooked up to Vite, and you can kind of see how long this takes on a default SAS Pegasus project. It is done. That was about five and a half seconds. I also have Webpack hooked up um, just to kind of try both of them. And we can sit here and watch Webpack go. It's thinking, thinking, thinking. And um, anyway, you get the picture. It's much, much slower. Um, so yeah, in my evaluation, Vite takes about five seconds on this project. Webpack takes that long, about 18 seconds. That's actually a little bit faster than it has been historically. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, just purely from a performance standpoint, Vite is a win there. So the next thing I want to talk about with Vite is a feature called Hot Module Replacement, or HMR. This is something you may have heard front end people talking about. Uh, I certainly had, although I never really understood what it was or why it was useful. All right, so I've got my Django server running over here. I've got my Vite server running in a different terminal. And now I'm just going to load up a new chat window. I'll push it off to the side and I'll ask this thing to like write me a poem. Um, and this is just to get some styled content on the screen. and. So what's cool about Vite is instead of like, if I want to make some styles now, let's say, you know, I don't like this blue background. I want to make that green. I'll just save that. Or, you know, maybe I think the gray text is kind of lame. I'll make that text red. And for some reason that is only, oh, here we go. I'm going to make that one red too. Thank you, cursor. Um, so you can see as I'm making these changes to my CSS files, which are like, you know, running through this complicated front end pipeline, they are being reflected immediately in my browser with no refreshes, no, uh, you know, nothing at all. Um, and that is really cool. Uh, it also works with React, which is neat. Um, so you can actually make changes to your React JavaScript components and have those reflected immediately in your browser without having to wait for the build and wait for it to refresh. And Vite is, you know, as you can see, it's it's quite fast. I mean, like, so I'm just gonna like, you know, change this to orange and like, boom, it's very snappy, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, so this just kind of leads to, you know, seconds shaved off your developer experience, but added up those seconds uh, start to matter a lot. And also if you've got, you know, multiple windows like this, or, you know, you've got like a second monitor, then you can, you can really uh, take advantage of just like staying in your IDE and, you know, looking over at your browser, which is a use case that many JavaScript developers will be very familiar with. But uh, we Django developers, you know, have historically had to do a lot of page refreshes. Cool. So that is the basics of HMR or hot module replacement, I think. Um, how it works, in case you're curious, is um, is basically instead of loading the, um, so I'm viewing the source of this page now, and instead of loading the static files from like a sort of like Django slash static directory, it will instead load them from the uh, Vite server, 
So this is loading from, you know, that same localhost 5173. And the Veed server is basically constantly updating those files in real time. And there is a little magic thing. I think maybe this Veed clients here, which uh, runs some JavaScript that essentially checks for changes in any of those files and then does some fancy stuff to render them immediately on the page. So I don't know the details of how it works, but, um, but it works and that is really cool. You might be thinking now, uh, okay, this is kind of weird. How do I do this hosting thing in production? And do I have to like reference localhost in um, localhost 5173 in all my static folders? Thankfully, the answer is no. And that is because of uh, this great little library called Django Vite, which handles all of this stuff for you. Um, and so basically, the punchline is basically that instead of uh, using a static tag, you use this like Vite asset tag. And that will sort of smartly swap out your uh, static paths to um, use that Vite server in development mode. And when you're in production, it will render it as a normal static file. So let me just show you quickly how that works. Um, so that's probably easiest to see in like the base HTML file. And so now instead of sort of like static and then some path to your bundle file, you'll have a Vite asset. And this actually points at your source file. So that is the file that's, um, you know, site base is like not my bundle file. It's just like this thing that imports my CSS styles. And that will magically sort of convert that into these localhost references, which work great in development. And then in production, basically what you need to do is um, Django Vite has this dev mode setting, um, which I have configured through an environment variable and then defaulting to debug. And so in production, typically you would you know, disable debug and then dev mode would be turned off. And then in production, Django Vite will serve these files uh, directly through your static file system after you run a build config to make that happen. So that was kind of a lot of information delivered very quickly, but the key takeaway is that in development, uh, Vite will serve your static files through the Vite server and that will work seamlessly. In production, you basically just run a build command to generate your normal static bundle files the same way you would with Webpack or some other build tool and uh, configure Vite and Django Vite to serve them as normal static files and then uh, everything just kind of works. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is code splitting. Um, so we are now running against a production site. This is deployed using uh, not the Vite dev server, but the Vite builds. And I'm going to go into this React demo and you know we can just kind of mess around in here. Maybe we give Pam a little raise. She's been doing a good job. And um, yeah, so what I wanted to show you here is that. So down at the bottom here, um, we not only have this sort of like React bundle that um, is serving the actual app, but we have all these other little bits of code. And what these are is these are bits of shared code that Vite has automatically split out so that we don't send duplicate code to the browser. So one of these things probably has like all of React in it. And one of them, uh, you know, has these sort of specific stuff around loading errors and validation errors. But what this means is that you can have your front end code that uses all different sorts of functions from everywhere. And you don't have to worry too much about optimizing all that and duplicating that. You can have sort of like two React components on the same page and you won't get like two copies of React. So this is another really nice feature that Vite comes with out of the box that should reduce your overall JavaScript load sizes and therefore should make your apps load faster. So yeah, that's why I think Vite is pretty cool. Uh, it's bringing a lot of new modern front end features to Django in ways that are pretty accessible and pretty easy to use. Um, Bug Bytes has a good sort of intro tutorial on how to set up Django Vite in your project. So if you are convinced and you want to get up and running with Django Vite, I recommend you go check that out. 
If you are using SAS Pegasus and you want to try this out, you can just change the bundler option on your project from Webpack to Vite, and it should all be set up for you. I will also publish a little migration guide on uh, porting a project from Webpack to Vite. And that's all for today. I will see you next time.